by the end of the 80s there was a huge concern that frogs were disappearing and we didn't know why that was. There was this sort of general idea that frogs were the canary in the coal mine, that something was happening to the environment and that, that we might be next. So there was a lot of effort looking at pollution, increased UV, radiation, climate change. None of these causes really fitted in. Our team in Australia, they came up with this idea that the cause was a, the spread of an infectious disease. The brief I was given was, we think it's an infectious disease, can you find out what it is? Then they went to some populations that were still abundant up near Cooktown in the far north. And by going back every couple of weeks, sure enough, they were there when the crash occurred. And that was the first time that sick and dying frogs were collected for pathology. Initially, we suspected there might be a virus that was killing them, but it turned out to be this superficial fungus that grows on the skin that caused, caused the fatal disease. So this fungus sits among the worst infectious diseases in history. It's caused over 200 species of frogs around the world to decline or become extinct. It took about a decade to get enough evidence to really convince everyone that the cause of the declines was this introduced pathogen. Our work has led to a paradigm shift in, in attitudes to the impact of emerging disease on biodiversity. It's been wonderful to win the Frank Fenner Prize for Life Scientist of the Year. After decades looking at fungus on the skin of frogs, it's, it's wonderful to get this work in the spotlight and to, to give this issue the, the attention that it needs. I love being a researcher because I feel like it's making a difference to the world. I've been blessed to work with a great team whose motivation is to save frogs and that's been a, a real joy.